Welcome to the Slob Sisters podcast, the show that explores the realistic art of modern homemaking, all of its challenges, and all of the rewards. I'm Steph, a YouTuber, stay-at-home mom, and former slob, and with me is my co-host and my sister, Jill. Hey everyone, I'm Jill, almost a professional house painter and e-bike owner. (laughs) I would say amateur house painter. Well, you know what, I'm getting there. (laughs) So today's podcast is super fun, it's just really chill, I'm really excited for it, and it does kind of piggyback well on an episode we did a couple weeks ago that was all about habit making. Yeah, and more exciting that we're actually together again, but this time I'm at your house because I'm here for a couple weeks to help you out with your kids a little bit and just hang out and have some cousins time and some sister time so we're having a lot of fun and if you uh maybe we'll tell maybe we can share the beginning of this <laughs> recording and how many takes it took for us to get going yeah we've uh, been having a hard time getting going with the giggles tonight so <laughs> <laughs> finally we seem to have calmed down we've got it so yeah Okay. I'm also really excited for this one because I think it's really good to revisit our goals and our habits on a regular basis. But before we get started, let's have a look at our weekly progress report. Yeah, exactly. So every week, if you're new to this podcast, we just touch on something we've done throughout the week, big or small, that we've made progress in. So what did you get done this week? Okay, so before I came here, my big progress was we had totally cleaned out and replanted our front garden bed. So we had this beautiful front garden bed. I think you mean litter box? Is it a litter box? Oh, is it a litter okay. box or is it a garden it bed? Was also, it had also become a litter box, which was <laughs> so gross because it was right before, like right as you walked in our door, all you could smell was kitty litter box. <laughs> but it was our front garden bed. And it was this beautiful garden bed that we had to take out in order to put a window in our basement so it was really sad that we had to take out these really old established plants and some of them lived but a lot of them died so we did have to replant a bunch of things and I did a lot of kitty litter scooping so we got that all done and we covered it in chicken wire and we put a fence around it so you can't even enjoy the garden now because it's like totally barricaded off but I'm determined to find a solution well hopefully she'll or he'll find a new spot yeah I'm hoping he finds a new spot like his actual kitty litter box (laughs) would be nice not right at our front entryway but we'll see anyways how about you progress I made progress once again um I cleaned my car out so I'm beginning (laughs) I'm beginning to sound like a broken record here but this clearly is a problem in my life that I need to figure out because I cleaned my car out it lasted like a week, then I cleaned it again, and then my dad was like, wow, your car's really messy, <laughs> and then you came out here and you're like, your car is like, you have stuff building up like two feet off the floor in the back well, you seat. did, because we had just talked about it last week that you had just cleaned your car out, and then I kind of didn't believe you. You like, accused me of lying. <laughs> I know, I said, you're lying in the podcast, what? <laughs> Our kid's legs in the back seat are like sticking straight out on like just a pile of junk. Anyways, I cleaned it out again today and I even vacuumed it and wiped it out. So yes. hopefully that will give me some pride in keeping it tidy for a little while longer. I hope so. And you even said you couldn't vacuum it because your vacuum wouldn't stretch. And I said, well, you could take it to the car wash. I took it to the car Which wash. Which you did. So did. I'm proud of you. Yes. You know what? It's really good <laughs> to celebrate these little progresses, even if it's the third or fourth or 17th time that we've had <laughs> to work on something. Because, you know, we're not perfect. It's all about progress and celebrating how far we've come, not about being perfect all the time. So I hope if you're listening, you think of something that you got done this week and give yourself a pat on the back for it. Yeah. And let's be clear. My car is still not perfect. I was, I mean, no amount of vacuuming could help what was going on. It a looked professional, really good. It looked really professional good. professional help. I still think I should just let a mouse in there and then you're going to turn oh, into yeah. a car neat freak. Okay. So let's get into today's topic. It's something I'm really excited for. It's our mid-year 22 for 2022 goals update. Yeah. So we're just kind of having a mid-year revisit on our goals that we set back in December. Now, if you didn't see, which I'm sure a lot of people in here haven't, on Steph's YouTube channel, The Secret Slob, if you just type that in, you can find it, we did a video in December about all of our goals for 2022. So there's 22 goals. And who is it that kind of gives you this idea? There's an author, right? It's, yeah, it's Gretchen Rupin from um, Better Than Before, which we talked about in the Habit Formation podcast. And she also just has a podcast called the, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, Happiness. It's either Happier Podcast or Happiness Podcast. 
Anyways, I listen to it all the time. And it's with her sister, too, which is great. And she does every year. Like, so in 2017, it was 17 for 2017, 18 for 2018. So we're at 22, and it's kind of getting a little out of control in the numbers. But so we set 22 goals in December. We filmed it. And that was kind of a kickoff to this podcast. Yeah, it was actually. It was yeah, like a trial we, run. We started right after that. So we're kind of today going over our goals, some of those news resolutions, you might want to call them, and see how we're doing. Maybe it'll motivate you on some of the things you might have set for yourself for the year. And I know this is maybe a bit of a debatable topic because some people really don't like resolutions, especially at the beginning of the year, or even goal setting. Like I'm a huge nerd at work because I'm like the only one that when they give us our yearly review on ourselves, I like love it. I sit there and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna like review myself, set my goals for the year, and everyone else is groaning. And I really find it helpful. But our whole family's kind of like that, I think. Yeah, definitely. We love constructive criticism <laughs> until our feelings get hurt. <laughs> and then we're like, too much, too yeah. much constructive. We're always happy to offer it up to anyone oh, yeah. and everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably not a very good thing. All right. So I'm so glad we're also having this discussion because there are a few things that I have forgotten about, completely neglected, forgotten on purpose, and I need to get going on stat. And there's definitely a few things that I'm just going to maybe leave in the dust. I realized they're not going to work for me this year or maybe at all. Are we talking maybe about your handstand goal? I've been practicing that. Okay. We'll get to it. I've been practicing my Spoiler handstand. alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So why don't we start by talking about some of the goals that we had. I mean, there's 22, so we're not going to go over them all, but we'll just kind of touch on some of the ones that maybe, you know, are going really well or not going really well. So what are some of the ones that you have just like smash out of the park already. Like we're six months in, you've already done them. You're, you're looking back now. Okay. One of the ones that I have smashed out of the park, and if you're listening, you know what it is. It was start a podcast. Oh, there you go. With my sister Jill, which <clears throat> I put down as my goal before we actually even had a plan in place. So it wasn't a cheater <laughs> do, goal. Do we have a plan yet? <laughs> well, I feel like we're making a plan. Yeah. We've got a system. <laughs> ish going and uh and I'm really enjoying it it's been so much fun I love that we can really kind of branch out and really be our genuine selves I do feel like I'm my genuine self on YouTube but it's always like topic based we're talking about housework this is more just like diving into the inner workings of our lives and so I feel like I get to share a little bit more be a little bit more candid so that is one that I have totally crushed this year I can't find another one <laughs> that I've done really well <laughs> Well, that's pretty good. I mean, starting a podcast is a big deal. And I agree. I didn't have it on my list, but that is a huge thing that we've been talking about for years. That's super exciting. So to tick that off is awesome. And we've yes. been sticking with it. I mean, we've on 14 actually. So that's awesome. Yeah. So for me, one thing that I have already done is I got a job closer to home. Yes. And you just started on and Monday. I just started on Monday and I walked to work. I'm and so happy for you. What? Oh, I mean, I got this job back in January, which was super exciting, but then there was like multiple delays for whatever reason. So I just finally started here in June. I live like six blocks away. I have two extra hours in my life every day. Yeah, It's unbelievable. So that one was one of my goals. And at the time when I recorded this, I hadn't even applied for the job. Maybe just like writing it down. It just kind of like appeared and then I applied oh, and it yeah. just kind of got the ball rolling. So you put yeah. it into the universe. And there we go. It came true. <laughs> and we should mention you didn't get it like a new entire new career. Same job, same company, just a new location. Absolutely. Yeah. But it, you've been trying to get in there for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Like four or five years. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I was going to say another one that I did that I did I have neglected to say is that I have hosted a dinner party once a month so I put this on my goals oh, list okay. because I feel like for a couple reasons I've stopped being very social one was pandemic yeah, I was gonna say COVID <laughs> and the second one was having a baby so I was kind of already on this like low social train prior to the pandemic and then I had my baby and it hit my third baby and it hit and I feel like I had completely forgot how to entertain and so we've been really good about you know every time a weekend's coming up we're just like who should we invite and we've been inviting close friends acquaintances, people we haven't seen in a long time, people we see all the time, and it's been fantastic. Yeah, I think that's awesome. It's something I don't do. Well, I do, but it's usually like taco night. It's never really very formal. So I've always wanted to kind of have a dinner like you guys are kind of doing. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And I love cooking and I don't know, my husband really enjoys it too. And it's funny because he was definitely the lesser social of the two of us. And he's the one that's always pushing me like, are we going to do our dinner party? And I guess I'm a little bit reluctant sometimes because you found I, his social niche. I know. Dinner I parties. Dinner parties. <laughs> and that's what he says when we talk about the runner. He's like, what about when we have parties? I'm like, what parties? Yeah. <laughs> <Are we laughs> anyway, so those are kind of my two ones 
friends that I'm, I'm like totally crushing. Yeah. Awesome. I've got one more that, I mean, I crushed and then like literally crushed myself and that oh. was starting a weightlifting oh, routine. Yeah. You were doing so good. I was doing so good. Um, I was like, you know, building my booty up. I was yeah. forming muscles. My before and after pictures were unreal after a few months, but it took a toll on my body. I am not 20 anymore. I was pushing myself too hard. If you guys have been listening to this podcast, you know, I had some chiropractic issues <laughs> going through. Yeah. It was really hurting me. And not to say that I wasn't doing it properly. I was, but it was just a bit too much. And, you know, I have driving conversations with people. I was, you know, wasn't willing to not give it my all if I was going to do it. So I've gone back to kind of what I was doing. I'm doing kickboxing. I'm still keeping active without like (laughs) deadlifting. (laughs) I'm not. I'm not doing anything (laughs) active right now. (laughs) She went for a walk yesterday. Well, you walked. Well, I walked to work and I'm stiff. Okay. My legs are very (laughs) sore because I walked my like eight minute walk to work. So I did it though. (laughs) <laughs> and I did like it, but my body did not. So yeah, I'm proud of you. And you did, I think, just trying something new and embracing kind of your body shape. That was a big part of it for you, right? And we talked about that in like the mom bod episode was kind of finding health and fitness in a new way that's not just be the skinniest and wear a bikini. Yeah, I was not going for that. I was trying to be strong. I got strong. And now I'm not strong again. So. <laughs> but I did it. Yeah. Well, I, the goal yeah. was, I wrote down, start a weightlifting routine. And you know what? There's a check mark beside it and I'm sticking with that. Well, and there's no reason that because you tried or started something, you have to adopt it for life to be a success. Okay? It wasn't for you. Yeah. Fair but enough. you did it. And I it was think, so time consuming. I, I it, even started taking creatine. I really got into it. <laughs> yeah. But like, okay, for example, like one of mine is to do a handstand, which I know you find so laughable. But like... Let's be fair. If I did one handstand once, I could check that off. I don't have to be able to do a handstand until I'm 99 to be like, oh, I've succeeded finally. Like if I do it once, it's fine. So you did it. You're good. I think we can be so hard on ourselves. Like you reach a goal and then you let it go. And we always say, well, I did it, but... Well, you did it. Yay. I did it. Yay. (laughs) And when you have 22 goals, like you have to be a little bit, you know, realistic that these aren't things you can bring into your life permanently all the time. Some of them, yeah, might be doing one handstand and that will be the first and last one of your entire life. (laughs) Yeah. I'm fine with that. (laughs) Okay. So is there any other ones that you, I'm like, I could like maybe questionable some of them, like sending people birthday cards. I've actually been really good at this year. I'll check the mail, I guess. Should I be checking um, the mail? It's your birthday on Monday or Tuesday and I have the birthday card with me. Oh, okay. I'm not going to mail it to you (laughs) from here. I'm here. Uh, I've gone on lots of dates with my husband. I haven't gone fishing, but I learned to gut a fish and fillet a fish, which is a new skill for me. What else have I done? Walk outside every day. I did did that until you did that for a week I think no I did that for about two weeks and then we went to Mexico and it was really cold it was like minus 50 that's fine but then when we went to Mexico and it was so beautiful there and I came home and I was like oh this is awful and I like refused to go back outside for a month (laughs) so I kind of lost that one That's okay. Yeah, none of the other ones I've really worked on yet. Oh, learning to play piano. I've been working on that. Yeah, your piano app. Yeah, I've been working on learning to play the piano, so proud of myself for that. Which I think is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I have a couple that I've also done really well, and I think my first goal on the list was actually to finish painting my house, because when we recorded that 22 for 22 video, I was in the process, and I mean... I didn't necessarily finish, but it was finished. <laughs> well, you and dad did it My together. dad came and helped me. There were some really high spots when I'm not a big fan of heights, and he was up there. I mean, good for him. He's like in his almost in his mid-70s here, and he was up on that ladder. He was reaching over, <laughs> and one day I went away for the day with my girlfriends, and I came home, and he had finished it, and it was like the most amazing feeling because it is such a big job. Painting's really fun at the beginning, yeah, and it just gets really not fun by the end. Yeah. So my host looks awesome I'm really pleased with it so that's one that I did your house looks way better like it didn't look bad before but you know it's nothing like a fresh coat of paint to brighten up the space well the people who lived here before me were artists there was an extraordinary amount of holes from like pictures in the wall like it was actually impressive we had a lot of stuff going on so the other thing I've done is I've purged my closet I have a lot less stuff going on with my closet which I'm really liking I've Mm -hmm. got my few favorite things and I'm shopping less which is really good I'm bringing my lunch to work more often instead of buying although last week was a disaster somehow for that but that's fine saying no to extra shifts it's important to set those boundaries with work so I've done that really well oh you've done lots I have yeah and oh get a dog well that I ticked that off which 
I well, don't. You... I don't have a dog. No, you don't but I was going to touch on that on the ones that okay. I've decided to toss. Okay. But um, the one that I have done is plan a friend's camping trip, and that's why you're here because this yeah. weekend there's about fifteen or twenty of us going camping for my birthday. I planned it on my birthday on purpose so that people would feel obligated to come and actually show up. And here I am. <laughs> and here you are. You know, <laughs> the weather looks okay, so we're doing that this weekend. So that's awesome. I'm I feel excited. like I've done pretty good on some of them. I'm excited, and I should say that one of my goals was to take a week long camping trip and now we've decided to live in our backyard in our camping trailer for the entire summer so during your renovation <laughs> instead of doing a week-long camping trip let's sub that in for a 12 week long camping yeah, trip very... no interestingly you are not getting a dog which you're going to talk about later but i am getting a dog there you go so we're going to be living in the backyard and we're getting a dog it's a perfect time to have a puppy um so i'm really excited for that yeah all right. I am so proud of you. You've made so much more progress than me. I will say yours were a little more reasonable than mine were. I'm seeing that now, but that's okay. So let's talk about some of our goals that we've decided to maybe toss out and why. Do you want to start? Sure. So yeah, the dog thing, I <laughs> I checked it off because I got a dog. I got a foster dog. Yeah. We fostered dogs a little bit. and <laughs> We fostered like six or seven dogs. <clears throat> yeah, and I love it. It was kind of my husband and I's you know, compromise because he doesn't want a dog and I do. So this is kind of like, have a dog when you want. But I really (laughs) wanted like a family dog. And we had a few last year that were amazing. And then I got one this year and he was really nice, but so much work. He had so much energy. It was exhausting. I was so burnt out and I thought, I am not ready for this. I buy myself a lot. My husband works out of town. My kids are so little, you know, I still work a lot. This is too much. And so I checked it off because... I am happy that I wrote that goal and that I can honestly say that I am not ready. <laughs> well, and I think it's the same thing. You got your dog. You, you don't have one now, but you got your fo- <laughs> And you could still foster dog whenever you want to like have dog walking days and stuff like that. But I think that's why he doesn't want to get a dog. It's not that he doesn't like dogs. I think he realizes a little more than you how too busy you well, guys are Well, I'm right the now. dreamer and he's the realist. Like, it's, yeah. that's no secret. I'm always like, we'll make it work. And he's <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> there's only so much time and money. And I think the other thing with those foster dogs is during COVID when I was doing it, dogs were in such high demand that it was like, you'd get a dog and they would be like adopted. Now the dog dogs, the foster dogs, you have them for quite a bit longer. It's a bit more of a commitment, so. Yeah, right. Yeah, something to think about. Fun when you had foster puppies, though. Yes, that was fun. So cute. Um, Okay, so one of mine that I'm tossing, but in a way keeping, is my 1,000 hours outside. So I did this one for about a month, and I have actually done this in the past and I thought oh I loved it it was so much fun I'm gonna keep it up so I started again this year and then about mid-February kind of the end end of our Mexico trip again I decided not to do it anymore because and I still think it's an amazing goal and if you've never done the 1000 hours outside challenge I highly recommend it but I really feel like I kind of got everything I needed to get out of it the first time around I don't feel like continuing to track my hours is motivating me anymore to get outside. It's become a habit from doing it the first time. And so now it just feels like a nuisance more than anything. Whereas before it felt like exciting. I got to color in some hours. I was always challenging myself to go outside. Going outside has become a real normal way of life for us. So So it's a habit that you do without thinking about it. It's a habit. So it was just having the thousand hours outside checklist and the coloring thing was more of an annoyance than a motivator. Yeah, I didn't need it. It's like if I was still motivated, you to brush your teeth you'd be like go away I'm yeah. doing it like get lost <laughs> you can do it come on Jill I'm phoning you to make sure you brush your teeth this morning of course I did stop phoning right. me please. yeah we, I need I would actually wouldn't mind a sticker chart for my tooth brushing but that thousand hours is really cool I mean She's doing great. It's amazing. Like, she's blown up, really. Ginny. Got, yeah. yeah Ginny, the Merchandise and everything. Yeah. She's doing really well. Because I think it is really important for families to, you know, have that motivation. And lots of times having that kind of coloring chart on your fridge or something like that is super motivating. So. Yeah. So while I completely 100% recommend it, I'm not doing it again this year. I've decided I've had enough of it for now. Yeah. Fair enough. One thing that I have tossed, which was one of my goals, was to eat breakfast. Oh, the reason I tossed it is because you and I <laughs> kind of <laughs> tried to do for this podcast intermittent fasting. Oh, yeah. And we both didn't like it and we both didn't stick to it long enough, I think, to even record a podcast. Maybe we still will. Well, we, so we didn't do it for this particular episode, but we were going to report back about it because it's kind of big and... We, yeah. we thought we'd try it out. Anyways, while I was kind of doing the research for this, because I think forever we've learned, you know, eating breakfast is so important. It's the best meal of the day. And I've just never... I eat coffee for breakfast with a lot of really, really fatty cream. And it's awesome. <laughs> 
But I read during all of this like intermittent fasting experiment that we were doing, like how it's actually not that important. It's not, you know, listening to your body is the most important and doing what works for you. And I realized I don't like eating breakfast. I don't like taking the time on it. I'm not hungry. I'm ready to eat around 11, 30, 12, which is when I do. So I have tossed that. I'm listening to my body. That makes sense. Yeah, I think it's definitely, that was definitely a goal that was more societal based than you based. Yeah, I have no interest in eating breakfast. I mean, I want to go for brunch with my girlfriends on like Sunday. Yeah, right. I love eggs Benny. From, like, <laughs> yeah. But I'm not interested in like making myself porridge at six in the morning. Yeah, that's fair. I will say the other one that I'm definitely going to toss is planting a huge vegetable garden. <laughs> That should be happening right now, I think. (laughs) Which is what should be happening right now. And we do have the garden and we have been working on it in one way. There was a bunch of lilacs in the center of it, which we've dug up and replanted elsewhere in the yard. But I think from a realistic standpoint, we are building a huge barn, a huge shop. We're gutting and renovating our entire house. It is so unrealistic for me to also take care of a garden and our puppy and our children and camping. It's just going to be so overwhelming, not enjoyable. So we are maintaining the garden, getting it ready. I might throw a couple like carrot seeds and some lettuce seeds in there just for fun and do kind of a half-hearted attempt at taking (laughs) care of them. Maybe my kids can just like pull some carrots out of the ground. But in terms of planning and planting and being able to take care of it, like it's not going to happen. So I'm kissing that one goodbye for this year. You better believe next year, though, I'm going to be all about the Garden Answer YouTube channel. I'm very excited (laughs) for it. And I'm wondering, as we're kind of going over this, like, if we were kind of a little bit too... Ambitious? Ambitious with our goals, like, (laughs) perhaps it needed to be more of, like, a bucket list type thing. Like, I'm looking at yours, and one of them is sleep under the stars one night. I think that's awesome, you know? still very attainable but not like start a weightlifting routine get a dog like run 10 (laughs) kilometers yeah be become plant-based eat breakfast like that is so much to take on whereas perhaps next year like you know a little bit more specific and simple yeah like an easy check rather than like yeah an entire year of weightlifting (laughs) year of weightlifting to get a check mark you're right that's a very good point and i do think you know next should be 23 so we might have to maybe pare it down a bit maybe we'll just pick like 10 things or something maybe yeah i like three is getting i think somewhere along the line i might have gotten the idea that i have 47 hours in a day In which to accomplish these things. And I don't. No, we don't. But are there anything, like, what's on your list that you really still want to work towards that maybe you haven't checked off yet, but, like, you're looking at now being like, yes, I need to do this. I need to get my act together and go for it. Okay, so I want to continue with my piano playing. I'm really kind of worried about it because I think it's probably going to get covered up and packed up all summer. So it might be something I have to revisit in the fall, but that's okay. It's kind of an indoor activity. And the other one I want to do simply and strictly out of spite towards you is my handstand <laughs> which I have like been doing tons of research I know exactly what I need to you do you researched how to do it yes. that is so you <laughs> how you build up the muscle strength I'm showing her now a little bit and I know exactly what I need to do I've been doing it a little bit I've been practicing out in my front yard my kids are like super excited about handstands now so I think uh maybe at Christmas time or something I'm gonna okay. just bust like out last my... minute like we're counting down to midnight on New Year's Eve and she busts out handstand <laughs> that's hey, my plan I will applaud that handstand that's, that's my plan okay so I'm doing the handstand everything else I don't care <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll try. Yeah. I mean, I've got some on my list that I may have not done yet, but I want to still work on in bed by 10 p.m. I'm just so bad at that. I mean... (laughs) You could have one check mark. Like you're saying, you'd have a one time thing. Go to bed. Make it a bucket list. (laughs) One time in your life, go to bed before 10. Yeah. That that I could do. (laughs) And yeah, exactly. Like if I'm not doing... How often do I have to be in bed? It's so vague. (laughs) Well, I know. And I wrote, go for a walk outside every single day. The first day I didn't do it, I was like, well, throw that in the trash. Yeah, you failed. I failed. And so it was a bad way to phrase the goal. Yeah, and then when I was going over this today, I have visit and prioritize family. And then I'm panicking like, well, have I been prioritizing family? I'm here right now. I don't know if I've been prioritizing. (laughs) Maybe I've been prioritizing my work. So it's like, I'm trying. But... The things I haven't done that I really want to do is read to my kids every night. I am so bad at that. Like, so bad. Yeah, but they read. your daughter reads by herself now. I know, but she needs, like, <laughs> I should be reading to her. I was really thinking of starting to read Harry Potter to her. Oh, yeah. You're... I've never read them. My mom read me the first book, and I've never read the rest oh, of them. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, and you know what? If you're too tired to read, you guys could just sit and listen to the audiobook. Yeah. I think that's totally legit. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. And that would be a check, I guess. And then you're just like, all I have to do is press this button on my phone and I'm like super mom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen to us reading to so-and-so reading us this book. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's something I've always struggled with. Is I just fall asleep. It's like hypnotizing to me. <laughs> I, I literally read one children's book and I'm just like done for the evening. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal for them, I think. Maybe. Yeah. So another thing I need to do, which you've heard me complaining about all week, is recording my spending and working on my finances. This is such a problem point in my life. It's actually crazy how bad I am at dealing with my finances. So I downloaded an app. That's step one. What app? I don't know. The first one that popped up when I wrote (laughs) budget app. (laughs) Well, here, get a report back about it. Good for you. Thank you. That's a, that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, but I think habit. this is why it's so important for us to revisit these goals. Because, I mean, I have mine sitting on my cabinet of my kitchen. The first month, it's there, and I notice it. But after a while, it just becomes kind of background noise. So I think it's great to even do this, you know, a few times a year and just kind of sit down, look at them, think, okay, what's still important to me? What yep. can I maybe not think about? And what should I start working harder on? Totally. And I think it's really liberating to just like cross some of them completely out. Like don't let these things hang over your head. If it's not going to work or you don't want to do it or it's just not realistic for your life, just cross them out. Yeah, absolutely. And don't feel bad about it. There's no failure when you set these personal goals to improve your own life. Even if you achieve one, even if you achieve half of one, that's success. That's progress. It's not about getting everything right. Otherwise, you know, you suck at life. That's not what it's about. It's about having fun and just kind of reminding yourself of some of the things you want to do. Because I think we kind of forget and get into the, you know, humdrum routine of every day. And there's beauty in that too. But remind ourselves we wanted to do some special things. Yeah. And also get yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. Like like you said, it's easy to kind of get into the routine of life and not mix things up. So this way you can kind of, you know, switch things up. Maybe look at what maybe be exciting and stuff like that. So let's kind of talk about how to make these goals a priority. And I kind of mentioned it already, having them visible and always revisiting them. Right. So some of the tips that we have for setting and achieving goals is making sure your goals are clear. So, and they're well-defined, which is something you (laughs) definitely have not been as specific about. And we're learning that's not the best way to set goals because then you don't really understand when you've finished it. Yes. You need to have a goal that has a specific end. So maybe for the strength one, it should have been like, I want to be able to bench press such and such an amount of weight. And then you know when the check mark happens, right? Yeah. Or get a dog. Okay, you got a dog for two weeks, <laughs> right? Doesn't mean get a dog and have a dog for the rest of your life. The goals also need to be a bit of a challenge so you feel that excitement when you achieve them, but not completely impossible. Don't way overset goals, unless we're talking like five, 10 year goals. Keep them simple, keep them achievable so that you really can feel success. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's those things, and I know you've got a lot of the goals that are those do this every day thing. Maybe not as achievable as a goal that's just, you know, yeah, you know, do it as much as you can kind of thing. But then we're getting vague. So it's kind of hard. I mean, they, there's tons online when I was looking this up on making smart goals like S-M-A-R-T. Yeah, specific, manageable, attainable, so, realistic, time. Yeah. Like with the timeline. Giving line. yourself the timeline. Okay. So yeah, SMART goals, basically making sure they have these specific attributes so that they can be achieved and worked on and everything. And then also write your goals down. I think that our goals can change when we have them in our mind. My goal for my health and my weight when I was 20 was different from my goal for now, but I've always had kind of health goals. But if I have them written down, I know specifically what direction I'm going in. Yeah, I agree. I mean, writing them down... Down. There's a lot of research on that, that writing it down is a lot better than just keeping it in your head. It holds you a little bit more accountable by putting it on a piece of paper. Maybe you have it up in your house like I do. So people can come and see that I have like one check mark on 22 items. And it just kind of has that kind of reminder there for you. Yeah. And it's fun. And I think people probably come over and ask you about it too, don't they? Sometimes they do. Yeah. And they think it's really cool. And I've got another friend and I didn't even know she was doing this. I think they picked like 50 things, but theirs were very specific. Oh, okay. And they're doing it together. So it's like trying a new thing. Like a couple? No. They're girlfriends. Oh, well, okay. They went to like a belly dancing class and they tried aqua size and they did an art class. Oh, fun. It was so cool to listen to all the things that they've done and they're doing it together. And so it's kind of like they're hanging out, but instead of just like meeting for coffee, they're like doing all of these really funky things. And who knows, maybe they'll find like a new passion in it. 
And I was thinking of asking you next year if you wanted to maybe try something like that. Just yeah. I think that goals don't have to be horrible and harsh and like painful. They can yeah. be fun. And I know you mentioned this to me when I was making my goals that I was really negative about a lot of parts of my life. You know, like I'm really bad at finances. I'm not fit enough. I don't go to bed early enough. I don't read to my kids and I'm really hard on myself. And I think when goal setting, we tend to do that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Pick a part of yourself that you don't like, pick it apart and then insist that you be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So instead, putting a positive spin on it, thinking about, you know, what you do want out of life and then making goals around that. Definitely. Definitely. I love that. I think staying positive is one of the most important things you can do. So I think we're just about at the end. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, I don't think so. I think I just want to remind everyone that like we've kind of mentioned, we're not perfect. Making these goals is a fun thing to do. You know, revisiting them and seeing that, hey, I have like four out of 22 done, but I'm making progress and that's the most important part. Yeah. And I just think it's, I don't know, the exercise itself is fun and it's fun to keep it around. Don't beat yourself up. I hope you haven't thrown yours away. If you've started and let it go, just pick it back up. There is no kind of timeline or deadline on any of these things just because you didn't do it every single day or be perfect just keep going yeah absolutely and it's there's no wrong time to start goal setting I don't think I mean there's obviously those times in the year that are you know a little more natural like January or September or in the springtime but I think any time is a good time to kind of sit down evaluate your life and think what do I really want and what can I kind of change so yeah I love that okay so let's get to our funny story (laughs) it's your turn today I'm really excited I did get some comments about my (laughs) story from last week that you know (laughs) it got personal but it was uh uh, yeah, it was something. I didn't so. see any comments. Were they all positive? Well, it was more comments from like people I know that they were like, oh my gosh, I never knew about that. So yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. That was a very personal story. If you want to hear <laughs> just a very personal story, listen to the last episode about <laughs> minimalism. Okay. So my funny story today involves both of us. And I think we've already talked about this time in our life, but it was kind of a big one about, well, I guess it would have been seven years ago now in 2014. That was eight years ago. That wasn't eight years ago. (laughs) We rode our bikes, bicycles across Canada, the country we live in. No big deal. No big deal. It was a huge deal. (laughs) Anyways, on about, I actually had to look back. We had a blog that I had just to record our travels and kind of what we did every day. And I'm so glad now because I forgot a bunch of things, but I kind of had the vague idea of this story in my head and I had put it in the blog. So I went back and looked. And so do you remember the day that we left Christina Lake and we had to go up in that big pass and it started hailing at the very very top. Yeah. Oh, like, absolutely. Severely hailing. So bad. We had to hide under a tree yeah. while cars like splashed massive puddles of hail at us. Yes. And we were just getting pummeled and we were at the top of this mountain. And so there's kind of cliffs on both sides, nowhere to really hide, but just over the barricade under this tree. It was Well, I, I remember that specifically because when we were coming up to that pass, there was a sign that was like warning, like extreme changes in weather. And we're like, oh, la la. Like, oh, it was it's such really a beautiful nice. day. Yes. And we had t-shirts and no rain <laughs> Jacket. It changed like so fast. Yes, that's right. So then when we were on our way down, we were freezing. You were like, my hands have never been this cold in my life. And I'm like, just don't think about it. Cause I've worked in like minus 30 hours on end in my life. And I'm like, just don't think about it. It's fine. It's fine. I think we even tried to warm up in a like roadside toilet. <laughs> Do you remember? I remember my hands. Like I was concerned for like them yeah. staying connected to my body. <laughs> it was really cold. We were also really hungry and towards the end in the bottom of the hill I saw something and I'm like oh my (laughs) god and slammed on my brakes it was like the most joyful moment of my life sunshine I know exactly what you're talking there was a full bag of potato chips in the ditch on the side of the road (laughs) which like for a normal person and looking back you're like How is that exciting? You just found some like gross garbage chips. Okay, so we found the, yeah, I want to tell, I want to tell the story. So we found this bag of potato chips in the ditch and I didn't even think twice, slammed on my brakes. I'm like, those look like they're full and they haven't been opened. Sure enough, there's a full bag of potato chips. I'm like, someone's lost a bag of potato chips. It's my lucky day. I'm so excited. It was just like, I I just, I've never, I never felt happier. It was like the best moment of the whole week. It was a gift from above. It was so amazing. (laughs) So we like, we're eating the chips. We're so happy. We meet our dad about 10 kilometers down the road and we're like, look what we found. We're so thrilled. And he was like, give me some of those. And he was eating them. And then we like had to keep biking a little bit. So he drove ahead. And as he drove ahead, he was like throwing the chips out the window of the car at us. Oh yeah. And that's when we kind of clued in. And that was when it clued into us that 
And we confirmed later that our dad had thrown those chips out the window, knowing with the full knowledge that his daughters <laughs> would have zero issue <laughs> With pulling over and taking food off the side of the road. Well, because he had drove through the storm. Because what was happening on our trip is he would drive ahead and we'd meet him like a few hours later. But he had drove through the storm and he thought, well, they're probably cold and hungry. I'll throw this bag of chips into the ditch for them. Yeah. And I think any normal family or any normal person would be like, ugh. Like, <laughs> pass by. But I just think it was such a such a cool sign of how well we know each other and how ridiculous we are that he was like, if I put these in the ditch they'll for sure <laughs> stop and get them like there's no note for you or among anything. all the bottles of urine <laughs> like all the bottles of trucker urine <laughs> oh a bag of chips so sure enough the plan worked i mean they were they were like 25 kilometers back so if we didn't stop and pick them up that would have been yeah, it yeah and he wasn't even surprised we're like why he wasn't would you, even, why would you even throw those out to us he's like i knew you'd get them it was just kind of like <laughs> I don't know if we should feel happy or sad that you knew we would take ditch <laughs> chips and just like demolish them. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, that's so funny. I just thought that was such a funny story. It's such a cool, I don't know, story about our family. <laughs> oh, we love chips no matter where they come from. That's right. <laughs> I remember once when I was in grade six, I found a bag of groceries that someone had lost. <laughs> and I was so excited. Because <laughs> there was cheese sticks in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We never got those. <laughs> I ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to share them with friends at school and they were not interested. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, two stories in one. Oh my gosh, that's good. Good <laughs> stuff, Steph. Thanks. All right. Thanks for doing this with me. It's been fun to be here this week. We'll see. We might actually have to record another one here. Yeah. Because I'll be here for the rest of the week. So Yeah. Camping Thank- episode. Ooh, camping episode. <laughs> we'll get some camping guests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thanks so much for listening in. Wherever you listen to your podcast, we will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye.